First Things First, Undisputed, coming up at 9.30 sharp. Jenny Taft, good morning to you. What are you and the guys talking about today? Good morning, Jenna. Hey, guys. Coming up on Undisputed, the NFL Top 100 list was unveiled last night. Is it crazy that Dak Prescott was not on it? Well, you know, Skip, there's plenty to say about that. And is it disrespectful to rank Tom Brady as the sixth best player in the league? Plus, Greg Jennings and Ray Mancini are in studio with us. Undisputed coming up next. Jenna, back to you and CC. I like the suit today. Good stuff. Thanks, Jenny. Uh, time now for us to go viral, sponsored by Best Western Hotels and Resorts. Anthony Davis was originally gifted the Lakers number 23 by LeBron James. However, due to production costs, the change wasn't allowed. He ended up going with number three. But Jimmy Kimmel had another suggestion. Did you ever think about number 80 because it's AD? No, a lot of people have actually told me that. Yeah. Like, 80, you should be number 80. And I was like, that's too confusing. It's, too, like, it's, it's yeah. the opposite of it's, confusing. Yeah, man, that's, a, like, that's a huge number. Like, 80, <laughs> like, I don't think I can fill in the jersey. So I'm like, I'm, I'm number I see. Oh, yeah, because the 8 is, is a fat yeah, number like, and then the 0. zero yeah. yeah so and I you're a it. slender guy. Yeah, you're right. Yeah, yeah. yeah, you need to save that for an obese player. <laughs> As one of the greatest 80s of all time, would he have worn it well? Man, let's do it. Bro, let me tell you something. You can wear number 80, and you can keep the unibrow. You can let it grow together. You can let it connect the caterpillar. It, I don't even care. If he wore 80, oh, you'd be man, on that would team be awesome. unibrow? Oh, absolutely. Oh, wow. Oh, I would have one of those. Absolutely. I got a Lakers warm-up anyway. Got some old Lakers throwback stuff. That's my squad, He'd man. He'd be the first NBA player, I think, ever to wear number 80. You got to get a special ruling from the league to be able to wear any number in your jersey higher than five. Because the ref's fingers, you gotta, they wanna be able to say three, five for the foul. If you have an eight, it's like, is it three, five, oh. or is it eight? Oh. So, so that's so why it only I'll, goes up to 50 something. 55 or 45 or, yeah. exactly. Right. So, but it's allowed. LeBron wore six. We, Dennis Rodman wore 91, oh. mm -hmm. if I yes. remember. So you could get it done. Yeah. When he says he's gonna wear three for a year, sell a bunch of jerseys, then switch to 23, sell a bunch of jerseys. LeBron will switch to six, sell a bunch of jerseys. Nike just printing money. That's how this 80. is gonna work. Yeah, 80. Let's do it. 80. 80. 80. 80. Let's do it. That's great. Mm -hmm. uh, back to the NFL. You, you get that thing handled. <laughs> Kill the caterpillar. To the surprise of absolutely nobody, Tom Brady is at Patriots training camp. Quite familiar with the daily grind that is camp. Brady, who turns 42 on Saturday, is entering his 20th season. Fresh off his sixth Super Bowl ring. There's only one issue. He doesn't have a deal past this season. But has he done enough to earn an extension? Yes, that was an actual question posed to him yesterday. I don't know. You guys, that's up for talk show debate. What do you guys think? Should we seven. take a should we take a poll? Sure. All right. Talk to Mr. Kraft. Come on. Good looking guy right there, see? As good as it Very comes. Good My goodness. Guy. Yes. It's right after working, working out. His skin out. looks all Shiny. nice and moist and <laughs> skin. Oh, cheekbones and everything. Go ahead. Talk about oh, it. His cheekbones. Uh. Okay. Well, let's focus. Uh, is it a big deal, though, that Tom Brady doesn't have a new contract, Chris? I think that when you're talking about the greatest quarterback that's ever played, six Super Bowl champions, three Super Bowls in a row, when he was past that stage where we hadn't seen guys that had consistently played well, it's an outlier. Every season he's had, 39 was an outlier, 40 was an outlier, 41, he kind of came back to the pack, but the team kind of changed how they were going to do things. After week number 16, they started running the ball. They start trying to protect Brady and some of those weak parts of that offensive line. So being the greatest and most accomplished player, it's strange because his words don't match up with how long his contract is. He's been insistent for two years. He wanted to play until he was 45. Well, now he's going to return 42. Mm -hmm. why, don't, why don't they extend him? This year he comes back sending a message, you know something? I need to be a little bit more, with a little more bulkiness to me. I'm going to add a little more weight. He started, because Brady's never been into lifting weights. He's been more into stretching, more into being limber and Flyability. everything. Yes. So now he's going to add some bulk. He keeps trying to send these messages to Belichick every single season. I like the fact, though, that Bill Belichick still controls this roster. Tom Brady doesn't need a contract because it's not going to be, oh, for one season, like Jordan, he's going to make the highest pay. Mm -hmm. If they were going to do something like that, then I believe it was significant. But their model has been, 
we're going to have a roster. We got the best player, and he's going to take the ultimate compromise, being the ultimate teammate, which allows this organization to have flexibility like no organization in professional sports. I do think that Belichick wants to keep control of the team. And when Robert Kraft granted him that full authority over the roster, this is what you end up getting because it would make sense. And I do believe that the Patriots will probably sign Brady to a contract, a one-year contract extension before the season starts. Just like last year, they doctored up his contract and gave him and Gronk extra incentives in their contract so that they could make more money. To me, I know New England. I know how they do things, and I know ultimately it don't matter what we think. It's what Tom Brady thinks, and I think to Tom Brady, it's not a big deal. By the way, the, those incentives, Gronk reached none of them. None of them. Brady left $5 million incentives on the table. So, yeah, it's like, hey, you can get more money, but we're not guaranteeing it to you. And even though they won the Super Bowl, Brady didn't walk away with all those incentives, even most of them. Like I said, $5 million of incentives were unreached. It's only not an issue because Brady's not making it an issue. And this part of what mm -hmm. makes him not only the greatest quarterback of all time, but one of the greatest teammates of all time because Brady can answer that question a lot of different ways and cause a, at least a little bit of drama in New England. Cause WEI and the sports hub, the local radio stations that are talking Patriots 24-7 at this point, with a little bit of Red Sox mixed in, that they will be, oh, is Tom Brady unhappy? You know, this is the first year if he doesn't get that extension, this will be the first time in his career he's playing in his walk year. Yes. He's never played the final year of a contract. Big Ben forced the Steelers' hand. Big Ben wanted new money, demanded, like maybe quietly, but made it clear he wanted new money, and they gave him new money. But other than Big Ben, all the older quarterbacks are playing on their final year. Eli's on his last year. Phillip Rivers on his last year. Yep. He might get an extension. Mm -hmm. Drew Brees is on his last year. And we know, obviously, Tom Brady's on his last year. So you've got four quarterbacks who are all, in theory, Hall of Famers, who are all going into the final year of their deal. But... It is fascinating to me that what you're saying is maybe the Patriots will do him the solid of give him a one-year extension. We know what Brady would like, a three-year extension. We know Brady would like he, to He be keeps repeating the same number. 45. I want to play time 45. I want to play time 45. And by the way, even if you're under contract, you're always allowed to retire. It's not like signing the contract. He wouldn't be able to retire if he wanted to. But I'm sure he would like to know, if I want to play till I'm 45, I'm going to be under contract on 45. Right now, he's under contract for 16 more regular season games and the playoffs, despite just winning a Super Bowl, by the way. You would have thought last year when they didn't give him the extension, when they just gave him incentives. It's like, well, they did just lose a Super Bowl. Well, now they just won a Super Bowl. And he's still playing right now under an expiring contract, which is somewhat shocking, but not shocking the way Brady's handling it. But for Patriots fans, it's maddening because it appears that they don't have a plan B. It is all plan Tom Brady. They got rid of Garoppolo. They got rid of Brissett. They, they, Brian Hoyer's their backup right now. They didn't go after Josh Rosen last year. It seems like what they're going to do is just... Well, okay, we're just going to keep rolling out what we had. Maybe we'll up the uh, run game a little bit and shore up our defense, but we're going to keep going out with number 12, roll it back, and see how far it can take us. It doesn't appear as if they are planning for the future. I think, Jenna, you and I are like a lot of the general public. We got so much confidence in New England, so even when they don't have answers, we just grant them. You know something? They'll do something. Well, I'm going to tell you what they've done the last couple of years. They traded away the potential replacement for Tom Brady. Jimmy Garoppolo was contestant number one. That did not make Tom Brady happy. I believe that him and Belichick and Kraft had plenty of discussions about Garoppolo. They had to ship him out of there. That's why he's in San Francisco. J Jacoby Brissett, I know my guy Bill Parcells is high on him. I know Belichick is high on him. They traded him away to the Colts. I believe that Jacoby Brissett will be a starter in the NFL in the next three seasons. So now your plan A and your plan B, now they're in that I don't know what we're going the to do. The plan is Brady. The plan is Brady. Yes. And this is and they also have baked into it. And this is where Tom Brady is quite simply, and I like to think I'm a good teammate. You might disagree at times, but I like to think I am. Yeah, yeah, this hold the ball a little too much. But you're all right. <laughs> a little dribble out shot clock. The this is where Tom Brady's a far better teammate than me. Because they are taking advantage of him to a degree in this regard. Because he, this last year left on his contract, if they do come to him with a one-year extension offer, and that's it, not a multi-year, he could say no 
and they are banking that he wouldn't. He could say, no, it's fine, I'll play out this year, because then guess what? You can franchise him. Yeah, for $32 million. Oh, no, that's not the Patriot. No, way. and that would be the biggest franchise tag ever. It would be the biggest cap hit Brady's ever had. It would put them in a... So they are banking on the fact that Brady would take not the contract extension he really wants, three years, that he'll take what they offer him, even though he continues to set records, continues to be the best teammate, continues to be one of the best players, mm -hmm. and not ever actually hold their feet to the fire. Not ever say... Listen, I just want to let you guys do your business the way you want. I want to let you know, if you don't give me a three-year contract extension, I'm not signing any extension. Right. And you're going to have to use a $32 million 2020 cap hit on me. But they know he won't do that, right. so it allows them to do this. One of the odd things is, too, we never talk about coaches' salaries or general manager's mm -hmm. salary. You never hear, well, what does Bill Belichick make? More than anybody. He not taking a haircut in it? No. He not taking a... No. Are ne you sure? Never. And, and he's the only one you mentioned How much do you think he makes? Well, the highest paid coach in the league, I think, other than Belichick, Sean Payton, just under $10 million. Yep. And Belichick makes more than any other coach by a decent margin because they pay him for two jobs. Yes. Coach and GM, and they are very cagey about what he makes. And I've been... I, I've gotten various numbers as low as $12 million, as high as $14 million. That's the type of money he makes. So he's not taking a haircut. No. Nope. He has full control of the roster. Yep. And he's got Brady still under his thumb. Brady is in line, just like the other Boston great, Bill Russell, as far as not only being one of the best champions of all time, but being one of the best teammates, teammates. of all time. All right, let's get back to the Cowboys. Now, they seem to be taking a hard stance with Ezekiel Elliott's holdout. According to Jane Slater of the NFL Network, who was on Undisputed and The Herd yesterday, the two sides are not close. And when she asked her source if it was the guarantee or the length of the deal that is keeping both sides apart, her source said it's, quote, everything. See, what's your reaction to this? Well, this is not good. Anytime, when he went to Cabo, I knew that wasn't good. Because you're not going to Cabo to say, you know something, I'm going to work out a few days. We're close, we'll get this resolved, and then I'll come right back into camp. Cabo, to me, meant that it was going to be an extended time out. And they've made a calculated, um, they made a, a mistake. It wasn't calculated. And that's when Stephen Jones, last March, when he talked about Todd Gurley. The limp, the money, the guarantees, everything, as far as Zeke, starts with him. That was a mistake. Even if he said it privately, when he said it publicly, now the player, the agent, the whole world knows that, wow, I guess that was a starting point. So then you get into this conversation, am I going to get a contract extension? They're like, yeah, we'd like to talk. So they start off negotiating. They slid that piece of paper over to Zeke. And it wasn't what he had said. It no. clearly was not only did it not start at Todd Gurley, to me, the only way Zeke doesn't counter, or his agent doesn't counter, is if that contract comes in under Todd Gurley. And the, the reason you wouldn't counter is, wait, we're not going to negotiate against ourselves, and you've already said, whether it was on paper or not, you've said your first offer yes. is four fifty eight forty five guaranteed, because that's what Todd Gurley makes. So if your first offer is less than that, then no, we don't need to counter, because we both know where this thing needs to start. And if the offer is less than that, I got to go to my football expert, and that's Jenna. And Jenna's like, Chris, there's no way that this guy... He had some stuff in his background with Ohio State. He's had a couple things since he's been here. He's been to the principal's office twice. She stole my words there. They got to be holding against him. For them to offer him a contract that is sub Todd Gurley, Jenna, they would have to be holding against him what's happened off the field. They can't look at the film and be like, wow, what kind of team are we? Last year, when we controlled the ball, which he does, defense plays less than 30 minutes, we're undefeated. That's the recipe for a championship. I'm getting ready to make this guy an embarrassing offer. Uh, you convinced me, Jenna. They're because holding he's the against best, him. Far and away the best player on this team. Absolutely. Far and away the reason the quarterback plays well and everyone else on that offense plays well. And the, the other argument against it, other than the principles off stuff, would be where the NFL is going in 2019. Pass, 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 running backs fungible and replaceable. But the argument on your side is, yeah, but they knew all that back in May sure. when Stephen Jones said these things. They knew all that when they saw right. what Todd Gurley's contract was. Zeke caught the Cowboys slipping in this regard. 
The Cowboys thought they were going to mm. be able to pay Dak, they're going to be able to pay Amari, they're going to be all do, do all these and things maybe, yeah. and deal with Zeke a year from now when maybe he doesn't win the rushing title, when maybe other things happen that either lower his value mm -hmm. or he, he proves his value such to an extent there's no question about it. He said, no, I'm not going to show up. Dak, we know he's showing up. Amari's going to be the good soldier and he's going to show up. Yep. I'm going to force the issue with me. I'm the best player on your team and what do you think this team's going to look like without me? And if they're this far apart on everything, this thing's not going to get resolved anytime soon. All right, the conversation picked up right now on Undisputed. Have a great day, everyone.